AI tools like ChatGPT and image generators have been extremely popular lately and really useful. But now, Bing has released an AI based on ChatGPT that has the ability to search the internet. Since I just got access to it, I thought I'd see how good it is and test out its capabilities by making a game purely using Bing's AI and other AI based tools if I need to. Let's see what it can create. I first went to Bing to try and get the idea and main concept for my game, because you kind of need to know that if you want to actually make anything. I asked it to give me an idea for a game, and well the first thing I noticed was how it didn't really want to just give me an idea for a game. It wanted me to specify all these things like the genre, to the point where it wouldn't really be it giving me a random idea anymore. Eventually though, I got it to give me one, and well, uh, this is literally Flappy Bird. When I told it that it was already a thing, it just straight up ended the conversation. After not having much luck using this main AI chat for ideas, I decided to instead use this other AI built into the Microsoft Edge browser sidebar, which is specifically designed for composing things, like stories, emails, or ideas. This gave me a list of ideas straight away, without any convincing at all, and I decided to go with the first one, which is a whack-a-mole game. Now it was time to make the game. I opened up Unity and then went straight back to Bing to ask it how to make a whack-a-mole game but it didn't really tell me how. It just gave me a list of video tutorials for whack-a-mole games, which I'm sure would be useful if I wasn't trying to specifically get Bing itself to make the game. When I explicitly asked it to generate code, it refused to do it. And even when I found a loophole to get it to give me an example script, it didn't even work and it wasn't able to make changes to it or build on top of it. The limit of only 5 questions per chat at the time also made it very hard to ask follow up questions. Okay so I just tested this again while editing and it actually looks like it generates code for you now and edits it so I guess that's good and is going to make this next part sound very stupid so uh yeah. Clearly if I want all the code to be written by AI I am not going to be able to use Bing since it refuses to generate its own scripts and just copies all the example code from the internet it doesn't want to make any specific changes to it that I request. So, uh, for the code, I'm just gonna use ChatGPT. I pasted the already created example code into ChatGPT, and it immediately changed the code just as I wanted it to. After another request, I had a working basis for a whack-a-mole game, where these moles will pop up after a random amount of time, go down if you click them, and also go down if you don't hit them fast enough. I asked ChatGPT to make the game increase in difficulty over time, and well, it did it. When I told it that it didn't feel random enough, it made it more random. Now that I was using this, I couldn't believe how terrible Bing was at doing this, and you can really tell that it's optimized for search, which it is really good at, instead of creating, writing, or editing stuff like code, like ChatGPT is. Continuing with ChatGPT, I ask it to write me a script for scoring, a high score system, and also a way to lose. Now that the game is pretty much functioning, it's time to work on the visuals. First, I asked Bing what font I should use for all the text, and it told me to use a font called Play Fullion, which after asking where I could download it, I was able to apply to all the text in the game. Of course, I also need to get rid of these ugly squares and this terrible default color background, so I need to generate some sprites. While I was playing around in Bing before, I noticed that if you go to the Images tab, there's actually an image generator built right into Bing, which I had no idea about. First, I generated an image of a mole for well, the moles that you hit, which I then removed the background of using this AI background removal website. For the wall kind of thing that they pop out behind, I asked for a grey wall, which looks pretty nice. And finally, for the background, I tried to get a kind of colourful sky, but it took me a long time to get one that was suitable. Even still, I'm not super happy with the current background. It's a bit pixelated, but I mean, it's good enough. With some post-processing added, the game is starting to look pretty decent. It just doesn't sound decent. In fact, it doesn't sound at all. I asked Bing where I could generate sound effects using AI, and the closest thing that it told me was this website called NSynth, which I've used before and basically just combines two different sounds. I made a bunch of sounds using this for hitting moles and missing, but I did have to download one sound for the moles popping up since I couldn't really make anything suitable for that using the website. Just like in my last AI video, I used this website called Mellowbytes to convert a screenshot of the game into music, and it wasn't as effective as last time, but after a few attempts I got a song that was long enough and didn't absolutely burst your eardrums. Finally, it felt a little weird hitting these moles with your mouse, so I went back to the Bing image generator to get a nice sprite of a sledgehammer, which using some code from ChatGPT, I was able to set as your cursor. All that's needed now is a name for the game, and so I chose the only name that didn't exist already from Bing's ideas, Whack-A-Mole World. And that's it. 
the game is finished. As I mentioned before, using Bing here really has shown that ChatGPT is still very much useful and that Bing is pretty much only good for, well, what it's meant for, searching the web. Since my last video about making a game with AI, which was only about 4 months ago, these tools that are available have gotten so much better and it's going to be very interesting to see how they develop even more in possibly the very near future.